Hi everybody, today's focus is a follow-up video. I'm gonna show you how I cure the compost that comes out of my wrinkle home composter. So a few weeks ago, I released a video where I set up my wrinkle home composter. Now part of the composting process is once you hit the max line in your composter, you need to remove the compost and then let it cure for three weeks. So that's what I'm going to do today. So if you didn't watch my first video, I'll put a link to it in the description below, but basically the wrinkle is an in-home electric composter and it uses heat, uh, mechanical uh, stirring, and bacteria to break down food waste into compost. So I have the manual here, so let's read how we're supposed to use the compost after it's hit the max line. The quality of your compost depends on what you feed the wrinkle and how long it stays in the unit. Although 90% of food waste breaks down in 24 hours, the longer decomposition leads to better results. Okay, Let the unit run for 48 hours without adding waste before removing the compost, ensuring it's fully broken down. Okay, I read this before and so today I did. It's been sitting for, for 48 hours without anything added to it. When the compost reaches the max line, which is where we are now, scoop it out down to the min line, leaving the chamber one third full. Sifting out larger pieces will speed up the curing process, but it's optional. I'll probably sift them out. Curing, so this is the part that a lot of people are like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. It has it right here in the manual, curing. Compost takes about three weeks to fully cure, depending on the time in the unit. Unstable compost can be used as mulch, but shouldn't touch plant roots, probably because it's still gonna be warm and hot from the decomposition process. For soil amendments, mix one part compost with four parts soil and let it cure for three weeks in a breathable container. Cured compost will resemble dark, crumbly soil with an earthy smell. If it smells sour or is still warm, it needs more time to cure. So it is winter. It's January here in Maine. I do have a dirt pile in my backyard that we use in my garden. So it's a little warmer today than it has been. So I'm gonna ask my husband if he can shovel out some of that dirt um, from my dirt pile that I have for my garden. And I'll bring that inside. I'll put it in a container and we'll bring it inside. I'm also going to ask my husband to drill some holes in the top of a plastic container for me so I can use that to cure the compost. Okay, so let's get started curing the compost from my wrinkle. My husband is just collecting from soil from my garden pile. Um, we're going to let it sit in the house and warm up before we mix it with the compost. So you can see we definitely have hit our maximum line here. The wrinkle is nice and full. My husband drilled holes in the cover of this plastic storage bin so it can be used to cure the compost. The temperature inside the wrinkle is nice and warm between 90 and 100 degrees, whereas the soil that we're going to mix it with is at room temperature around 65. So the ratio that they say to mix is one part compost, four parts soil. So let's scoop out one scoop of the compost and sift out the larger particles. I started by putting the larger particles back into the wrinkle, and then after doing this a few times, I just collected them in a separate bucket. I'll show you that later. I did pick out some of the charcoal pellets, even though it didn't say you have to do that. This is something that I do when I check on um, in that Facebook group to see if it's necessary to do. Then I add four scoops of soil, mix it up, and start again. And continue to do this until we hit the min line. The temperature of the mixture now is in the high 60s, low 70s. These are the larger pieces that I did sift out and I'm gonna put them back into the wrinkle to continue breaking down. 
So I started to cure the wrinkles compost on January 13th. I'm walking down my basement stairs, sorry. It is now January 16th, and I honestly haven't checked on it yet because I've been super busy. I have car problems. My car needs a new torque converter. It's a whole thing. So let's have a look at it now. Walking up to it, the first thing I notice is that there's condensation all over the cover of the container that I'm using to cure the compost. So that clearly means that it's still heating and breaking things down. Let's open it up. Oh boy. Okay. So we definitely have a white, is it a mold maybe on top? I gotta read my paper. Reading the manual, there's a section, what is white mold? White mold is normal and harmless. Actinomycetes help break down substances like ligand and glucose, aiding plant growth and protecting against pathogens. Your compost should have an earthy smell. Well, it does. I've got the white mold and it has an earthy smell. Okay, so that white mold and earthy smell is totally normal during this curing process. It's just good to know that it happens. I'll check on it in a few more days. Okay, today's Saturday the 18th, so I'm gonna check on the compost. Okay, so there's less condensation on the lid. Let's open it. Still lots of white mold. And, hey, yeah, temperature's 66, so it's definitely cooler than it has been. Okay, so it's been three weeks, so I'm gonna go check on the compost that has been curing. Here it is, I'll remove the lid. We still have that white mold, but remember they said that's normal and it smells just like dirt. I don't smell any food smell or anything. It does smell like dirt. I get my thing. Take the temperature, 64, 65, 67. Yep, cause around here just, yeah. So it's just the same temperature as the basement right now. So that's great. So the compost is cured. It's cured for the three weeks. It smells like dirt. It does have that white mold on it, but they said that that's absolutely normal. Now, normally at this time, you'd be able to put it in your garden. However, it is February and it is freezing and I have probably about 10 inches of snow in my yard. So what I'm gonna do is put the cured compost in a potato bag. It's like a fabric bag so that I can continue to use the plastic box with the holes in it for curing the next set of um, compost from the wrinkle. I can't believe I just did that. Dropped the compost <laughs> as I took it out of my bucket. And I was trying to put it in my fabric bag and I was trying to do it on camera, is my camera, and it fell out. So now I have to go put this back in here. What a mess. In spilling it on the floor, I'm really able to see how beautiful um, dark soil this is. So maybe spilling it on the floor wasn't a bad thing. As you can see how absolutely rich, look at how rich this dirt looks. That looks so nice. All right, now I gotta pick it all up and put it back in my bag. So I think we were successful in curing the compost. It's very interesting to me, because when I first took it out of the wrinkle machine and I put it in that bin, it did have still a bit of a smell to it. Um, it wasn't a bad smell, but it definitely didn't have that same earthy smell that it had three weeks later. And the temperature was still very high. So we know that the food was still being broken down. We know the bacteria was still working to break down the food particles. And obviously it did really well because I could smell that beautiful dirt smell three weeks later.
and the temperature had normalized to what the room temperature was. So if you have this wrinkle composter and you're taking the compost out and immediately putting it in your plants, I think you'll probably do some root damage like they said in the manual because the temperature is going to be too high. We did encounter the white mold that it says that you could in the manual and so that's okay. It says it's a normal part of the process so we're okay with that. So I did sift out the larger pieces. There were definitely a few things that just weren't finished being broken down and that's okay. There were like stems of um, I think it was an acorn squash, just something that's a little bigger I didn't really chop up much and some, some skin I think of the squashes. No big deal. I just put those pieces right back into the wrinkle and let them continue decomposing. I also did pick out those little charcoal pellets and I know they say you don't have to do it but I did remove some of them. Not all of them, but I did remove some of them because I didn't know if they were necessary for the wrinkle to work properly and I figured if over time I'd be removing all of them. So this is something I want to investigate. I'll probably reach out to that Facebook group and ask if you have your wrinkle for, let's, you know, you're using it for let's say, you know, years. When do you run out of those little charcoal pellets and is there a way to refill them or do you need to, do you not? Is this just something for the starter? That's something I do need to look into. But overall, I'm super happy with the wrinkle. I love using it. I can't tell you how easy it is just to put in the scraps of food into the wrinkle and just kind of let it do its thing. On occasion, I do need to add a couple of cups of water because to me, it looks a little dry. But um, you would have to, I think, eyeball your own compost and see, does it look wet? If it looks really wet, you hit the dry function. If it looks really dry, you add some water. I think it's all going to depend on the type of food and type of scraps that you're putting into the compost machine. But overall, I'm absolutely loving it. I have no smell whatsoever anymore. Remember in that first video, I did have a smell. We took care of that. The only time I notice an odor now is when I open up the lid to put things in. On occasion, I'll get kind of a waft of the smell, but you remember everything is decomposing, so it's going to have some sort of scent. It can't be completely scent free, but when the lid is down and you walk near the wrinkle, you don't smell anything at all. It is just still down in my basement. It's actually working okay there, so I think I am gonna keep it there, but I don't think it would be a problem if it was in my kitchen, but since it's set up down there, I'm just gonna leave it there. I am really looking forward to using this compost in my garden. I usually purchase a lot of compost to try to amend my soil because it is a newer garden and it still just isn't quite as rich as I really want it to be. But right now it is February and we have about probably about 10 inches of snow in my yard now. And we're supposed to get another six to 10 inches on Sunday. And I'm just like, ugh. So spring and summer feels so far away right now, but at least I'm gonna have some fresh, good compost ready for my garden. If there was a product that you would like me to test, do me a favor and put it in the comments section and I will add it to my viewer suggestion list or you can mail me something. My mailbox address is in the description below. Just do me a favor and send me an email first. That's also in the description below so we can have a conversation about the product. You never know, it might be something that I've already tested. It might be something that I have in queue in my home. Let's just have a conversation about it first. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, have yourselves a great day.